listen to me and glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. And he broke the bond of prison for me. I'm only now, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free on the last. Goodbye to sin and things that come back. set me free and he broke the bond of prison for me I'm glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God he set me free
rather have Jesus tonight than anything, but uh, this song um, was on my heart this morning. We started singing. Um, blessings on me. And uh, But this one had come to my mind, and, and uh, I want her to sing it for me if she would. God's been good. God's been good to me. And, and um, look across the congregation tonight. And, and if we started right here and went down and around, we wouldn't have to go back very far. I'm, I know we're, we're blessed to be able to be here today. We're blessed to, to walk into here and to, and to be breathing and, and uh, you know, with our home and everything. But if I guarantee if we started right here and we just went down the road and said, in the last just a little bit, I mean real serious situations where God's been good. Not, you know, not those things we take for granted, but those real serious situations. I mean, I can look and see and know it myself just from testimonies that I know. I know where God's been good. Amen. And uh, pray for her. She sings us. Beyond my wildest dreams 
us through it all God's been good God's been good God's been good I'm going to read several passages of Scripture, but if you would turn to Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 through 18. I want to talk to you about the great day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord. I don't know when that day is going to come for me. I believe that I'll be in the rapture. Either way, I know where I'm headed, and I know that my future is secure by the cause of the blood of Jesus Christ. As we read in chapter 1, verse 14, it talks about the great day of the Lord is near. Now, remember in Zephaniah's day, he's making a prophetic utterance, even though in those days they were still looking for God. I would that America was still looking for God today. It says, It is near, and hasten greatly even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. You know, when the rapture takes place, friend, there's going to be a lot of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, but it's going to be too late. Goes on to say in verse 15, that day is a day of wrath. You see, God is a gracious God. He's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. But there is just one thing that God cannot put up with, and that's sin. It says the day of wrath, the day of trouble and distress, a day of wastefulness and, des and desolation. I would say, even though in Zephaniah's day, this was what it was written for, but I would, uh, I would say that we can look at that and we can see how it applies to this world today. Not just here in America, but around the world. It says, a day of darkness, a day of gloom, a day of clouds, and a day of thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and the alarm against the fenced city. We see that because we have... We, see, we say that we are protected. But notice what it says. The day is coming. Now, there's an alarm that's sounded. And against the high towers. Well, I reflect on this. And I remember hearing preachers preach on this subject. This particular verse of Scripture. When the twin towers were brought down. There was a day of. A sadness, a day, it, well, actually, we was in the camp meeting under the tent. And those sirens started going off. In fact, up there, we were still at the house when the first one went off and had some preachers that were staying at our house for the camp meeting that week. And I remember those days and how sad and how frightened we were. In fact, the, a lot of the North Carolina preachers' wives was calling and saying, come home. They was crying. They was, they was upset. Come on home. And... uh you see, we never know what's going to happen. We only know that our secure, our, we are secure in the fact that we are part of the family of God. I don't know whether we'll even live to get home tonight. I plan to. Miss Builder's going to fix me some supper. And I plan to be there to eat it. But we, hey, listen, the Lord could come back before we even leave this building. Notice it, what it says. He says, I will bring distress upon men. Now, that spiritual blindness. As we look around us today, you will have to say, in this world, not just in America, but around the world, the worldwide scene, there's spiritual blindness on earth today. You see, the voice of the Lord is still being preached from America and there's certain spots around the world. But for the most 
of most part heathenism is taken over. As we look at this, it says, that I will bring distress upon the men that they shall walk and like blind men. Now, a blind man has to feel his way around, has to be led around. He cannot see what's around him. I would say that's exactly what's wrong with America and with the world today. Blinded by the sin nature. And they cannot see the goodness of God because sin has blinded them and has corrupted them spiritually. He says, because the sin has sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Verse 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the days day of the Lord's wrath. Don't care how large your bank account is, it's not going to do you any good. I don't care what, how great uh, the nation of, uh, of America is going to be at that, day, at that time. We, they, we say that we're the greatest nation on the earth. We say that we're the richest nation on earth. But you see, our riches is not going to do any good on the day of the wrath of God. As we look just a little bit further, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. You say, now, you, I've been taught that God's a holy God, that God's a loving God, a righteous God. And you talk about his nature, that he's jealous. He's jealous over what sin has done to his creation. Sin has corrupted what God made holy and pure in the beginning. But as we look just a little bit by the fire of his jealousy, he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. In other words, it's going to be so quick. So I don't know how quick his quick is going to be, but I want to tell you this one thing. I know God's in control, and he'll do it like he wants to do. So this is the wake-up call for us today. We need to be ready. Now, as I look over the congregation, I'm asking you this question. I'm not asking you, are you a member of Westside Baptist Church? I'm asking you this pointed question. Are you a member of the family of God? That's the most important question you can answer. You see, it's not how much money you've got in the bank account, how, large, how nice a house you have, how great a car that you can drive. I, it's not the uh, friends that you're acquainted with. It's not the status in society. My dear friend, the only thing that's important tonight is are you a member of the family of God? Because you see, I believe he's coming soon. I don't know. I know preachers say, well, they believe it may be this year. It could be. It may be next year. I don't know. But I'll tell you who does know. God knows. That's why he says, be instant in season and out of season. In other words, be steadfast. I look around, Brother Alton, I see a lot of wobbling Christians today. We're supposed to be steadfast Christians. Now, remember this. I'm preaching to the choir tonight. And not this choir up here. I'm talking about the people that walk with God the people that God can depend on. But nevertheless, we need to be challenged. Because you see, hey, I get weary. Sometimes I get a little upset. Don't ask Miss Mildred. She'll tell you it all. But you see, in this walk of life, we're still supposed to seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you to me in other words he simply said put me first look around us in Christendom today is Christendom really putting God first in the lives that's a sobering thought 
You see, uh, as Christians, I'm saved people, people that claim to be saved, churches that claim to be fundamentally sound or sound or whatever, regardless whether they are flash and flush and go or whatever, they claim to be, and even Baptists that, hey, listen, I'll tell you what, Baptists wobble on the wheel too. So you see, we cannot point a finger at some across the town when we might have a little mold in our own eye. But I want to tell you, we will stand and give an account. Brother Joe, I kind of believe that individual churches are going to be grouped together at the, at the Bema Seat Judgment of the Rewards. And we'll all stand there and we'll give an account. We'll hear the reports read, the records read. You see, by the way, every deed that you do, every place you go, every thought you think, every action you commit, they are recorded. <laughs> That's a sobering thought. My, my, my. That would cause any Christian to really ch uh, check up and take inventory and say, well, Lord, I better start repenting of this, repenting of that, whatever. You see, Everything that we do, everything we say, the thoughts of our minds, these things are recorded in heaven. You say, well, my brother Melvin, do you mean to tell me that uh, we can lose our salvation over the things that we've committed, with things we've done? Uh-uh. If you're saved, you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're going to stand at the beam of seat, not the white throne judgment. At the beam of seat, it's a judgment of rewards. And as I've already said, I believe that... I, I, just as painology, West Side members through the years are going to stand up there. And the records are going to be read. Faithful or unfaithful. I trust that we'll have a whole lot of faithful folks that are recorded up there. But notice as we look just a little bit further, we read in uh, Jude. Uh, chapter uh, uh, Jude verse 3 chapter 1 because there's only one chapter one book one chapter in the book of Jude I don't know why they don't say Jude 1 23 but they say Jude 23 that's the way it says look at uh, the sinner's warning to be ready in this very carefully real quickly and others say with fear putting them out of the pull, uh, them out, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You see, the things that, that we, we hate those things, and, and, and God, God is, is, disapproves of those things. But he's, we're being challenged to be sure that we walk as God would have us to walk according to the Word of God. Then over in Revelation chapter 21, it says, uh, uh, talks about the lake, of, lake which burneth. And this speaks of the destruction of the, of the laws. But now go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. What is a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That verse of Scripture right there blows my mind. Why would a person... Put worldly gain before serving the Lord, following the Lord. You said, well, now, Brother Melvin, my job requires that I do it or they'd fire me. I call that providential hindrance. I think God understands these things. But listen, what about the other six days of the week? You see, God still requires of us to be faithful. We have prayer service. Brother Joe has Bible study. And we have Senior Citizens Eating Day. Glory to God. And it's coming up this Tuesday. For you that don't avail yourselves of that, God help you. Notice here. Do we see not only that, but the believer's readiness in this? And there's a preparation that precedes readiness. Look very carefully. No water until the ditches are dug. I've never seen any water run down until you, in, a, in a path until you dig a ditch. 
In other words, you've got to, you've got to lay the path. You've got to, you've got to have, the, have the route for it to go. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make the valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. In other words, dig a ditch and let God fill the, fill, the, fill the ditch with the water. Because you see, you can't make the water. God makes the water. But if you make preparation to receive God's blessing, he's going to put your, his blessings, the blessings of him, on in your path. So, therefore, therefore the verse that I mentioned, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But now, in the Second Kings chapter ten, verse uh, chapter five, verse ten, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, "Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thou shalt thy flesh shall be, come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean." You see, there's no healing until the leper had dipped in the muddy, muddy water river rivers, waters. Now, as we study that, and I don't have time to go into all of that, but let me just tell you this. He didn't want to go in the water because it's muddy. But he was told, unless you dip in this water, that you're not going to receive the cleansing. There's a lot of times God wants us to do things that we say, no, no, no. But you see, when God tells us to do these things, Dear friend, when we follow through with what he wants us to do, then we are blessed because we have been obedient. Little as much when God is in it. Look at the signs of his coming. The Bible says, when ye see these things, many shall run to and fro. <laughs> we put a lady on the airplane yesterday and sent her back to Texas. Same day that she came, no, she came in the night before, spent the night. Put her on the plane, and in just a few hours, she's back home. Man, I'm telling you what, they sent me to Israel a few years back. We got on a plane in daytime up there in Atlanta, Georgia, and we landed over there in Germany in daytime. Boy, that was an experience. You say, that was fast traveling. No, we had the night over the ocean. But you see, God is still in control of this thing. He's in control of everything that, that, uh, that uh, around us. He's in control every single day. Notice here, Daniel 12, 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. But then go to, uh, go to Nahum chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. And the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariot shall rage in the streets. That was a prophetic utterance. And it's not talking about those horse-driven chariots either. I'll tell you what, you get out on the road... And it's dangerous sometimes. I just can't stand to drive up 85 Expressway. Man, I'm telling you what, they got three or four lanes. And you get in one, think you're safe and secure, and first thing you know, they're honking the horn at you. They're zipping by. And I'm thinking, man, where is that state patrol? But you see, here's the, I want to tell you, my dear friend, that God is in charge. The chariots may be running. This is a prophetic utterance of the day in which we are living. Back there in Nahum's day, they were given that prophetic utterance, and we are living in those days. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle against one another. Have you had a wreck lately? Some of you have. I've been fortunate I'm telling you what, they, some of them have scared me to death. And I've scared a few people myself. 
The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle against one another the broad ways, and they shall, and they shall seem like torches. Jet airplanes. They shall run like lightnings. Jet airplanes. That's a prophetic utterance to tell you with in that particular day. But uh, then we see in Second Timothy chapter four verse three: For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrines; they dislike the truth. You will agree with me. We're living in those days. They don't want to hear the truth of the Word of God. Heaping to themselves teachers having itching ears. I want to tell you one thing. As long as I've got breath, as long as this young man's got breath, you won't have to worry about the false teaching. Brother Joe that supplies for us so frequently, Brother Anthony did a fantastic job last Sunday night. Oh, my word. We're so blessed around here. Brother Mike Atkins, when they'll leave his precious wife alone, he preaches a pretty good message, don't he? Ah, Lord, I don't know. Sometimes I like to be a fly on the car, roof of the car going back to Roanoke, Alabama. <laughs> Amen. Without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. You know, the world don't like us. Now, I don't know why in the world the, 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 the world don't like us. Well, they'll like Brother Alton, they'll like Brother Joe and Brother Mike, but they don't like me. The world, hey, the world hates us. You know why? We stand for the truth. Now, I use them as an illustration, not actually, because I'll tell you what, those three men preach the gospel truth. And they do not compromise. It says, uh, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, as far as of those that are good. But then go on to the, uh, the, uh, the same chapter, verse number 2. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. Boy, I'm telling you what, in my day, if I'd have asked my parents, you know what would have happened? Melvin, you know where that tree's at, that peach tree. Go get me a switch. I've told you many times I made a mistake one time. I went out to the Mulberry tree of those cranberry tree, one of those berry trees, and I got a little weak limb, brought it back. And my mother said, All right, you better go out there to that peach tree and get me a good long switch. Buddy, I'm telling you what, she taught me how to do the holy dance that day. But notice, men shall be lovers, their own self covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And in the fourth verse, it says, Traitors. Headed, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now, that's where we are at today. Pleasure has become the God. God is put on the back shelf. But we are challenged right here. That, and this is, in the, and, and, and Timothy is prophesying that, and he's revealing that, in the days just before the rapture takes place. But notice in uh, the abounding uh, in iniquity, Matthew records in chapter 2, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, many, the love of many shall wax cold. Homes breaking up. Oh, I want to tell you, nation against nation. We're living in those days, my dear friend, when Satan has unleashed every bullet he has in his arsenal. Do you know why? Satan has access to heaven. And he knows some things we don't know. He knows his time's short and running out. And he's doing all his dirty work now. He's destroyed as many homes, as many lives, as many nations as he can now because he knows just around the corner He's going to be reeled in. I think we're going to have, uh, we, uh, we sing that, 
what a day that will be. I believe that's going to be one of our theme songs. What a day that will be whenever Satan is real in. I'm tired of that rascal. I'm tired of what he's doing to lives. I'm tired of how he's disrupting churches. I'm tired of what he's doing to bring America down. I'm tired of that today. But I want to tell you, when all the dust is settled, it's still God. As we begin to close, there's wars, famines, and pestilences and earthquakes that are mentioned. As we, as believers are warned in Matthew 24, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. That's why, my dear friend, we should be challenged. That's why we should be on guard. That's why we should have our armor, our spiritual, spiritual armor on. Because, you see, Satan walks around trying to devour every Christian that he can. You wonder why you're having a hard time. Just be thankful you're having a hard time. Rejoice in it. God will not allow anything any greater to be put on you than you can bear up under. Now, some of you say, well, now, Brother Mel, and I'm telling you what, I don't know how much more I can take. Well, God does. I mean, sickness comes. Financial issues come. Family hurt, uh, issues come. Jobs play out. All these things are life. But I'll tell you what, when you trust God, He says He will bring you through it. Watch ye therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. Blessed is the servant of whom... The master shall find doing this, you see. When the Lord comes back and encloses him. I don't know. Brother Alton, it sure would be wonderful if you or me was one of us, us was in the pulpit when the rapture took place. It'd be wonderful to see all the family of West Side Baptist Church seated in the pews when the rapture took place. Wouldn't have to worry about that ceiling. God would take care of that. Why, all of a sudden, we just go through the ceiling. Some of you might say, well, Sure would hurt my head. No, 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 no. But in these last days, these last minutes, these last moments, let me challenge you. Put God first. Put God first. You can't go wrong doing that. Now, I want to tell you this. When you put God first, you're going to have the enemy on your trail. He will do everything he can to sidetrack you. He, will, he knows your weak point. And hey, listen, everyone, all of us has a weak point. He knows your weak point. But I'll tell you what. You can defeat him on your knees. Because my God is able. Bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for helping me. Now, we're going to extend an opportunity for people to pray to you, talk to you about their needs. Look over the congregation, it seems like everybody under the sound of my voice is saved. Striving, working for you, living the Christian life, not to works for salvation, but knowing that they're under the blood. I pray, God, that you'll bless these people that came out tonight, the visitors that are with us. And Heavenly Father, help us just to have a shower of blessings come our way. 
and help us to be strengthened in our walk and in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray.